Based on the Instagram reels and content creators telling me on a daily basis that owning a home is the only right decision. I always believe long-term owning a home is one of the best plans you can have long-term. The next station is Toronto. The advice is simple. Buying a home builds wealth. Renting builds your landlord's wealth. Just notice you haven't uh, tipped me, your landlord. It sounds logical on the surface. Why pay someone's mortgage when you could be paying your own? This belief is so widespread that most people never actually run the real numbers. But math doesn't lie. We should be able to figure out based on our own unique situations if it really makes sense for us. And I'm not saying that you should be making this decision purely based on money. There is peace of mind in owning and not having to deal with shitty landlords. Statistically, owning a home is likely to be your greatest investment. You should know what decision is financially best for your future. Thankfully, the answer to this question is exactly what I'll speak about in this video. So where do we begin? Well, let's start with listing all the potential factors involved in buying and owning a home. There will be many assumptions here, but I'll leave the spreadsheet as a link in the description. And if you want to see how this works for yourself, just fill in your own values. So what are the factors? When buying a home, we must consider home inspection fees, rental appraisal fees, setup fees, lawyer fees, title insurance, land transfer tax, mortgage payments and interest, property tax, home insurance, maintenance and repairs. There are a whole other range of things I do not consider because they're either too complicated to predict if someone will actually face those values like pest control, seasonal upkeep, emergency repairs, landscaping, condo fees, HOA fees, you get the point. Or there's overlap with renting an apartment like moving costs and utility setup. Finding the cost for all of these things will be difficult, so I will find a ballpark number for my living area here in New Brunswick, Canada, which is absolutely not the norm. We are the forgotten province of Canada and our prices do not compare to those in Toronto or Vancouver, so I highly encourage you to use the spreadsheet in the link below. The median sale price for a single detached home in 2025 here in New Brunswick is $342,000. A quick jaunder over to TD Bank shows mortgage rates of about 4.6% on a three-year fixed contract. Property tax in my city is 1.55% for 2025, which amounts to about $5,301 per year for that $342,000 home. I entered some realistic numbers into mychoice.com to see a monthly home insurance cost of about $60 per month. I honestly don't know where to find a good way to calculate the annual cost of maintenance and repairs, but we will put this at a moderate estimate of about 2% of the house cost per year. I will not run through all of the other estimates for the various things I'm considering, so you can pause the video to look if you're interested, but they're all pretty much ballpark estimates. We've talked a lot about losing money, but one aspect of owning a home is that it is an investment. So let's look at the history of the housing market here in Canada to get a rough estimate for the yearly appreciation. Because owning a home is an investment, just like you watching this video is an investment in your knowledge to eventually make the right decision for yourself. So if you found this video helpful, please subscribe and leave a comment. Now, in August of 2015, the average home cost in Canada was $400. $38,000. And in 2025, it's now $689,000, which amounts to about a 4.63 return on investment yearly. I know this is a very ballpark estimate because housing prices have been crazy here lately and fluctuate wildly. And you could even buy at the peak and lose a large chunk of your own net worth, albeit momentarily as the housing market crashes. So part of this return on investment factor is basically getting a good deal on a house. Yeah, whatever. We're, we're trying to do a ballpark here. I mean, come on, let's move on. Okay, so factors in renting. Ah, there's also down deposit. Don't forget the down deposit. We have listed most of the major factors related to buying and owning a home. It's now time to consider renting an apartment and there are a lot less things to consider. There's the cost of rent, yearly increases in the cost of rent, renter's insurance, and I mean, that's basically it. So since I'm excluding a lot of the overlap, like moving expenses, utilities, I'm not gonna include that here. And I'm also not including all the other factors like pet deposits, application fees, or repairs not covered by your landlord, because those are way too unpredictable. We're just trying to get a ballpark estimate of on average, if you exclude overlap between the two different things, which one is better? All right, let's break this down, let's go. Home parameters in the top left, we've got our mortgage, down deposit, interest rate. I've kind of set this up in a way where you can go through and everything in orange you can change yourself. We've got a 10% down deposit, so you could change this to 20% and see how that changes. Okay, so we've got our house appreciation, upkeep per month. You can go in and change these values, but things that are not in orange, they've been hard coded. So as you change your mortgage, all the other values will change. So if you come in here and you say, you know, you're buying a $500,000 house, Boom, your upkeep is $833 now. So we'll go back to what we were here. Um, we have one-time costs as well. So land transfer tax, title insurance, lawyer fees, home appraisal, you get the point. And then we have renting parameters as well. So you can change your rent cost in here. We have this as the Canadian average right now, and then the monthly insurance.
Again, this is hard coded, but you can go in and change it yourself if you'd like. Then we have global parameters, investing as a question mark. This is super important. Now, if you're somebody that does not invest in the stock market, owning a home is probably almost always the correct decision. But if you do invest in the stock market, make sure to watch till the end of the video because you'll actually see that renting and investing in the stock market could actually be super beneficial to increasing your long-term net worth than owning a home. Um, the CPI inflation, so that's the uh, inflation index, the consumer price index, I have that as 3%. Again, these are all ballpark numbers just to give us an idea on average for what the right decision might be here. And then we have the market average return at 6%. Probably want to be conservative here, right? We don't want to be assuming that the market's going to return 15% uh, year over year on average. So we'll leave this at, at maybe 7%. Let's, let's put it at 7%. Let's see what this brings us, okay? And then we've got the house, the house section. These are our total losses, total gains. Now, you, you might be looking at this thinking, a million dollars? Where'd that come from? Now, this is our house appreciation. So remember how I said house appreciation here? If you put that at 0%, total gain on the house is zero. Now, we're looking at this saying 4.63% of the house value each year. That's how the house will grow each year. So we're looking at this and we're saying that the house is going to grow on average 4.63% of its value each and every single year. Now, obviously, for 30 years, and that's what we've extrapolated this out until um, 360 months, we're going to gain a lot of money. So this is where the house is an investment. You're investing a lot of money, you know, $342,000 into owning a home, the return is going to be quite large and you're going to be owning this over 30 years. So yeah, you're going to get a million dollars in terms of owning this home. Sounds great. Wait for it. You're also going to be paying $260,000 in interest because this is a loan at an interest rate of 4.6%. So there's, you know, you might be thinking, why isn't it that if the interest rate and the house appreciation rate are both the same rate, for the same loan, why is it that these two values aren't the same? They don't cancel each other out. And well, the reason why is because your, as you pay off your your mortgage, as you pay off your mortgage, the amount of money you put down on principal is increasing in time, and the amount of money you put down on interest is decreasing in time because you're paying off more and more of that of that principal, the principal of the house. So the percentage of money you actually owe to the bank is decreasing in time. So. That's, uh, that's, that's a good thing. You want that. That's a good thing. And the house appreciation is increasing in time. Then we've got the ending balance. So this is just how much money you actually owe on the home. Um, the property tax plus upkeep. This is going to be a pretty large value because this is 30 years of property tax, upkeep on the house, and home insurance. So this is, this is quite a lot of money, $559,000 over the course of 30 years. And we have the monthly cost. So this is how much each month you actually have to pay for the upkeep, the insurance, the property tax, the mortgage for the house. So this is kind of like a guaranteed amount of money you're going to have to put on the house every single month, which looks like a lot of money, but you need to keep in mind this house is an investment. So, so not only are you paying to live there, you're also paying into the investment. So this, this kind of hits two birds with one stone here. You're not just paying to live and also paying investments, you're, you're basically taking care of both. Now, you probably don't want to put all your money into a home. You, you probably do want to invest in the stock market, but investing in a home, it, you know, it, it will accrue wealth. So you can't look at this and think, oh, that's kind of a lot of money. You need to keep in mind that part of this is, is actually good for, for building your wealth as well. Now, let's look at renting. So we have the rent of $2,121. And this is going to scale with CPI. So as you can see here at the 12 month mark, when we go into the 13th month, the rent has actually increased and it's scaled with respect to inflation. Same thing with our insurance also will scale with respect to the rent cost, which is also scaling with inflation. So both of these things are scaling with inflation. They'll go up in time. And you can see we've lost about a million dollars in paying rent. We've also lost about $14,000 in paying insurance over the course of 30 years. Now, let's turn off investing for a second and let's look at this. So what we'll do is we'll look at the total net change of our money. So how much money have we gained? How much money have we lost from owning a home? And we'll sum both of those things up in the home section here. So we're going to sum up 
all of the gains, all of the losses, and we're also gonna subtract off the one-time cost, and this was our initial cost, which is kind of insignificant. All of these things are insignificant compared to the amount of money that you're gonna gain or lose on a home over 30 years. So we look at this and we see $159,000. That's how much money we gained. But what really matters is how much money could we have lost if we were renting. So let's look at that. So what we'll do is we'll just sum up. It's pretty simple. We didn't make any money renting. We're gonna sum up everything that we've lost on renting. So that's about a million dollars. That's about a million dollars. And you're probably thinking at this point, why would anyone rent an apartment? You take that monthly cost and you look at the difference between this monthly cost that you have to put in your home and the monthly cost that you have to put into renting. So for renting, we're putting just about $2,148. So there's a difference. You could invest that difference. What if you invested that difference would that mean that renting is worth it? And we also can't forget about something. We put $34,000 down on a down deposit. Let's take the difference, okay? Let's take the difference between how much money we're putting on a house each month and how much money we have to put on rent and we'll invest the difference of this money. So what is that? That's $501 every single month. But don't forget, we have a down deposit of $3,400. So when we were ready to buy that house, we had that money. So let's just say that we don't put that money into the down deposit of a house. We just leave it in the market. We just leave it in our RSP. We just leave it in our TFSA. So we'll add that. So we'll have $3,400 when we start investing month one. And then every month after, we'll continue with those contributions of the difference. And we'll look at our investment account. We'll see how that grows. And what we'll do is every single month, we'll evolve this by that 7% market return divided by 12 because we're looking at a per month basis here. But this is, a, this is a 7% average annualized return. And then we'll add in the new contribution from, from our investment that we're making each month. So you do this, okay? And let's turn the investing to yes. And what do you know? Over the really long term, owning a house, in fact, actually is worth it in this one particular circumstance, <laughs> okay? Now, for example, for me, most of the houses around here, yeah, they maybe cost $300,000. Um, my rent right now is fifteen ninety five, dollars and that actually is my insurance. Okay, so owning a home is just a little bit more worth it, but what if the market returns 8%? Okay, now rent is really worth it. So in reality, what you see is it's really complicated. Um, investing is always the right option, of course. You should be investing as much as you can into the market if you're looking to sort of maximize your net worth with respect to, uh, you know, there, there has to be a balance, of course. But it's complicated. The one-time costs don't really matter as much as you may think. Unless you're buying and selling a house frequently, then lawyers' fees will begin to stack up. They take a percentage of uh, the, the value of your home. So, of course, that, that really matters. But if you're looking to buy a home and hold it for the long term, most of the time owning a home really is worth it. The people that tell you that renting is always worth it might be in a situation where in fact owning a home isn't. The most important point of doing this calculation is to realize that it's actually really difficult to determine if owning a home is truly worth it. So you can put together these parameters, you can change inputs, and maybe one decision versus the other is actually beneficial for your net worth. To be completely realistic, there's a massive benefit to owning a home with respect to peace of mind or the accomplishment of owning your own property. It is a great investment, but potentially the housing market is so bad in your area that renting is genuinely what's good for you. So you have to make your own decisions which are best for yourself, but you can evaluate it. So go out, see what you can find with the spreadsheet. If there's anything that you see that's a mistake, let me know in the comments below. I'll try to fix it right away. Um, I appreciate you guys watching the video this long. Take care and bye-bye.